L-carnitine. It's like everywhere you turn, you see it. It's helping you burn fat. It's helping you do this. It's helping you do that. Okay, let's set some things straight and let's talk about how L-carnitine works because it is a pretty darn good amino acid, but I want to explain the different variations of L-carnitine, specifically acetyl L-carnitine, what it can do for your brain, what it does in your body, and how it works with the energy powerhouse in your body known as mitochondria. So let's talk a little bit about it. Now, L-carnitine is naturally formed. It's an amino acid that's occurring in our bodies. Okay, it doesn't create a whole lot of it, but it creates enough for regular function. But the thing is, L-carnitine comes in a multitude of different forms. In this video, I want to focus on two. I want to focus on the main focus of L-carnitine, and then I want to focus on acetyl L-carnitine. And the difference is quite dramatic between the two, even though they are both the same ultimate amino acid. Now, the overall purpose of L-carnitine, whether it's in the acetyl group or not, is to shuttle fat into the mitochondria so that it can be converted into energy and ultimately create energy, burn fat, recreate ATP from ADP, and all that fun stuff that you learn in biology class. But what one of the coolest things about acetyl L-carnitine and L-carnitine is in general is that it also helps expedite the removal of waste from that fat metabolism. You see, whenever you have any kind of energy metabolism in the mitochondria, you have a bit of free radicals that are produced. You have that cellular waste. Well, L-carnitine helps expedite the removal of that. So in addition to helping create energy, it's also a great antioxidant. So let's really quick break down the difference in what acetyl L-carnitine is. You see, acetyl L-carnitine has what's called an acetyl group, just like some of the neurotransmitters in your brain, like acetylcholine. It means that they can cross the blood-brain barrier, which means that acetyl L-carnitine can help that energy metabolism much better in the brain than it can, say, in the muscle with a traditional L-carnitine. That's the primary difference. And acetyl L-carnitine is being shown to really help reduce cognitive decline that's associated with Alzheimer's, associated with dementia, associated simply with regular aging, but even more recently, the cognitive decline that's associated with Lyme disease. And those of you that know about autoimmune diseases and inflammation are gonna find that very, very interesting that acetyl L-carnitine is showing to help reduce that brain fog. That's some pretty remarkable stuff. But let's also talk about how L-carnitine works in the way of fat loss, because let's face it, this is a health and fitness channel, and I know a lot of you are here wanting to learn about how it can help you burn fat and get the best possible physique. I wanna note this though, acetyl L-carnitine and L-carnitine are two different things. However, acetyl L-carnitine can be converted into traditional L-carnitine within the body, as well as L-carnitine can be converted into acetyl L-carnitine within the body, but at a much less efficient rate. So in that sense, it is easier to take an acetyl L-carnitine than it is to rely on traditional L-carnitine to convert to that acetyl form within the body. You see, what L-carnitine does is it helps mobilize the fat into the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is a powerhouse, it's working, it's mobilizing fat, and it's burning fat, and it's turning it into energy, into that ATP. Well, L-carnitine expedites that. And 95% of your L-carnitine stores are in your muscle in general. So that means when you're moving around, when you're lifting weights, when you're running, your body is either using glucose that's stored in the muscle, or it's using fat. And if it's using fat, it needs that L-carnitine to get shuttled into the mitochondria so that you can create energy. So more L-carnitine in the muscle means more fat utilization in the muscle, which can ultimately mean a leaner physique. You see, it comes down to a matter of preference. If you have more L-carnitine in the muscle, the body is more apt to want to use fat than to use glucose. See, if you're using glucose all the time, sure, you can have energy, you can have strength, but you're never really tapping into those energy stores of stored fat, the kind of stored fat that you can burn and get leaner with. Now I wanna reference a study from 2011, because up until 2011, it was all kind of speculative whether L-carnitine worked or not. And after 2011, it just kind of blew up in the media. You see, in 2011, the Journal of Physiology found that if you supplemented L-carnitine for a period of six months, at least in this case of a study, L-carnitine for six months led to a 21% increase in carnitine stores within the muscle. That means a 20% increase in ultimate fat utilization. You see, if we look at it like this, let's say you had 50% glucose utilization and 50% fat utilization. Now you have 20% more carnitine, which means that you're now going to have 70% more fat utilization and 30% glucose utilization, meaning your body is more primed to run on fat and it's more efficient to utilize fat because it can get into the powerhouse that needs it to make energy. 
Now, one more thing that this study found that's just kind of an extra side note, it also increased work output by 11% which is a fancy way of saying it increased their strength, increased the muscle endurance, ultimately increased the overall energy the muscle could output by over 10%. That alone is enough to elicit more of a fat loss and a metabolic response. Some pretty alarming, amazing stuff there when it comes to just plain L-carnitine. But let's talk about the brain now. Let's talk specifically about the acetyl form of L-carnitine. Okay, we've discussed like a million times that mitochondria is where energy is created. Well, that happens a lot in your brain and it happens very, very fast. So if you don't have an acetyl form of L-carnitine that can cross the blood-brain barrier, the brain isn't getting the fuel that it needs, which means the brain is just going to continue to run on glucose, which it generally is going to run on anyway. But if you can get that acetyl L-carnitine into the brain, then that means the brain is going to start to run on fats a little bit more. And it's been shown that the hippocampus portion of the brain runs really well on fats. So let's make it possible by making sure we have acetyl L-carnitine in the first place. Now, there are some other studies that back this up, which are pretty darn interesting as well. One study found that just taking acetyl-L-carnitine for about four weeks reduced the effect of age-related carnitine decline in the brain, and also a little bit in the liver. Meaning, when your brain has declining levels of carnitine, it has declining levels of fat utilization, which ultimately means declining cognitive function. Now, in addition to that, there was another study that linked acetyl-L-carnitine directly to improved memory function. Now, that probably has something to do in part with what is called acetylcholine. See, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. We've talked about neurotransmitters in other videos. Basically, they're the little spark of energy that triggers a response, specifically within your nervous system or within your brain. And acetylcholine just so happens to be the neurotransmitter that triggers your memory, specifically your short-term memory. So have you ever been having a conversation where you're just talking to someone and all of a sudden you totally forget what you were talking about mid-sentence? It's like, I don't remember what I was saying. Well, that's generally because that acetylcholine isn't firing right. Maybe it's because you don't have the right kind of fat metabolism. Maybe it's for another reason. But the cool thing is acetyl-L-carnitine is showing to help that reproduction of acetylcholine, which is indirectly linked to better memory. So there you have it. Acetyl-L-carnitine not only can help you burn some fat, but it can also help your brain and get you a little bit more memory. So you don't just have brawn, but you have some brains too. So when now you're wondering, what kind of supplement do you take? How do you take it? When do you take it? How much do you take? Well, it comes down to a couple of things. The thing is, L-carnitine is easy to make. You don't see a lot of companies counterfeiting it. We all know the Food and Drug Administration doesn't have regulations on supplements, which means you really have to be careful. But when it comes to supplements that are super cheap to make, like L-carnitine, it's almost more expensive for them to use cornstarch than it is to even actually use the supplement. So not a whole lot of fear there. But one thing you do want to know is you want to take it in the morning. Acetyl-L-carnitine is absorbed better in the morning and you're going to get better neural function out of it by taking it first thing in the morning. But one more thing you want to pay attention to, try taking it with alpha-lipoic acid. And I've done videos talking about alpha-lipoic acid before. Alpha-lipoic acid helps reduce free radicals. So like I said, acetyl-L-carnitine helps the reduction of free radicals, helps the reduction of the waste products that are a byproduct of cell and energy metabolism. That alpha-lipoic acid can just help expedite them out of the body even faster so you have a clear system that's running low on inflammation, doesn't have these barriers, and you can get the most out of your brain and your body. All right, you can tell this is a topic that I'm passionate about, but if you have any topics that you're passionate about, go ahead and post them in the comment section below. Let me know because I read all of those and they give me ideas for future videos. As always, keep it locked in here. See you in the next video.